Hello, how are you doing? Um, I just said I'd do a little video about Reason Plus. So I've had Reason Plus for about a month now. Just before I um, go into this, I'm not like uh, in any way affiliated with uh, Reason Studios or anything like that. Um, I've been using uh, Reason Plus for about a month because I was previously interested in getting the Reason Rack thing. Um, but I said, eh, I'll try this out now that they've got this little subscription thing. Um, some people are against subscription stuff, some people aren't. I think probably we're going to see a lot more of it now, because I think there's an expectation more so now that, you know, you should be able to get a product for some sort of a monthly fee and use it when you're going to use it and not use it when you're not going to use it, but th that's another discussion. Um... I'm just going to have a quick kind of run through all the stuff you get with Reason Plus, talk about whether I think it's worth it or not, and um, yeah, I'm just going to do a quick run through all the stuff you get with us. Yeah, if you're interested in like um, the uh, like the sound packs and stuff they're doing, I'm not really going to be going too much into that because it's kind of subjective whether or not you like the sound packs they put out. In terms of generally Reason samples and stuff like that, I actually think they sound really good. Um, by the way, the TLDR for this uh, review, if you don't want to watch the whole thing, is I actually really like this. Um, I think it's a good value, if possibly a little bit expensive, because a lot of people maybe have like multiple subscriptions, maybe they're subscribed to Splice and stuff like that, so it gets kind of pricey. Um, but I do think that it is, it is kind of worth it, because basically I find myself going to this where I previously would have gone to complete because I find it a bit more immediate in terms of it's nice to be able to kind of drag in some sort of a you know they have like decent sample libraries down here which I'll talk to in uh, talk about in a minute but it's nice to be able to drag one of those in um have a play with it kind of get your sound right and then drag in a couple of effects and yeah, I could kind of go for it. It's a little bit more immediate than using something like Contact. And most of the time, it sounds pretty much as good as a lot of that stuff. So we're just going to have a brief look through all the different stuff that you get with it. And um, I'll talk about what I think ab ab about it. So, yeah. So the first thing, uh, I'm just going to go through the kind of instruments and stuff here that you get with it. So very quickly, uh, this is Kong. Kong is their drum machine. Um, it's actually pretty cool so one of the things about reason is that you've got all this like patching capability so you can uh, if i flip the rack here you can patch all of these out to individual outs um you can patch like cv and gate and stuff and do sequencing all within reason with some of the sequencers which i'll show off in a second and um the sample library that they have for this um d this kong drum machine i actually think is like it's really good in terms of like variety and the actual sounds are really good. So there's like a bunch of kits in here that you can browse through and pull in. And they all sound pretty consistently good, I think, to me, you know, that's up to you or whatever. Um, the other thing I really like about this is, so each of these cells you can like load in, um, you can load in like obviously a sample player here or you could have a loop player, but they also have these like, um, modeling sort of thing so you got this bass drum modeler which is designed to more model sort of an acoustic kick drum um then you've got stuff like obviously you've got a, a snare one in here as well that models sort of a snare and they actually sound really good and you can get like quite a lot of different results out of them um, and then they've got more, sorry, I keep clicking that. Then they've got more like synth ones. So you've got like this synth hat and you've got a synth, um, a synth snare here as well. And then you've got these other effects that you can add in on top of it, like compressor or whatever. And they've got some cool ones as well, like this, uh, this rattler, which is designed to sort of emulate like a, a snare, um, a snare snare, uh, the rattling part of a snare. But yeah, you can get like really good sounds out of it. And you can have like multiple of those loaded up in here. Um, you also have this kind of cool concept where you can attach um, you can attach multiple uh, of these pads to each other. And they are kind of like different hit types of each other. Where you can have like one hit type be closed hi-hat, one hit type be say half open, open, or maybe pedal hi-hat. And those could all be attached to like the same, um, the same 
hi-hat synth or multiple samples or a loop player or whatever it might be um so yeah generally kong is is really good and the inbuilt effects there's something about reasons effects that i really like i don't know what it is they have this kind of they almost sound dated but in a way that i really like and when you put things through them they they just they have a sound i think that just other stuff doesn't anyway that's kong a very brief overview of kong i really like kong then there's redrum this is like um you just load samples in here and it's got like a one of those 808 style st step sequencers in here a bunch of different kits in this one as well like there's literally hundreds if not more than that I think I think there is probably hundreds but yeah there's like a bunch of different kits in here and then you've got your like 808 style sequencer and you've got the same thing here where if you flip it over you have individual outputs and all that stuff um I'm not gonna go too much into that I'm more interested in Kong myself but this uh, drum computer is pretty good as well you got an Octorex loop player which is a loop player um it uh it pulls up rex files and you can edit them just to speed this up i'm not going to go too much into detail into the rec sampler you can chop up um loops and stuff in it and uh yeah it sounds good there's a pretty big loop library that comes with it as well okay so the next one we've got here that i'm going to talk about briefly is europa um europa is like sort of like their wavetable synthesizer but it's got like some additive stuff going on in there as well um it's got like you know wavetables and whatnot in here that you can mess around with and you've also got these modifiers, so you've got like, they're sort of like in Serum, you've got the like bend modes and stuff, but there's also some weird kind of additive harmonic stuff in here as well. Um, just lots of really weird things that you can do to it, and you can also, um, you can also have two of those, and you've got three oscillators then as well. Um, one of the coolest things about Europa is that you can drag it. So I'm just going to drag in a loop here. Okay. And then if I go to user wave, it's going to have brought in that loop or wavetable or whatever I've brought in here. But the coolest thing about it is that you can actually, let's just turn off this modifier here and just use a saw wave. You can, obviously you've got a filter here and um, I'll talk about that more in a second. But if we go to user wave here, this is the loop that I just dragged in and you can use it as a as a filter which is mad that's daft but it's actually really cool there's loads of weird stuff you can do with that um but let me just switch back to low pass here for a second so i've just got a regular low pass filter and then you can bring in this like um these like kind of additive sort of modifiers i guess to the filter so you there's this high frequency noise so this is going to add a bunch of noise to the filter which is really cool if you distort it. But there's other ones in here, uh, like Ensemble, which, like, adds unison to the filter. And then there's some of these really weird sort of harmonic ones. Then you've got your modulators down here, which you can draw, um, which, is, which is pretty cool as well. The one thing I am going to say about this and europa is one of the first ones where you really run into it but to an extent you get this in in this redrum computer as well is you really start to notice how much they need to update the the gui situation some of the knobs are like tiny and you have to be like this is probably my primary criticism of it you have to be like right up at the screen to see anything like the, this level thing i mean if you're sitting at your keyboard or something and you're you know playing in your next hit and you want to be kind of changing up things on the synthesizer to see how it's going it can be really hard to see some of the more complex ones like europa and stuff like this um it would be nice if they'd add like some sort of way where like i could focus this or something like i could click on this and then this would take up this entire plugin window so i had more space or magnified it or even popped it out or something like that Anything would be good to have as an option there. Um, that's the only thing I frequently find myself thinking, oh, God, I wish they'd really just, you know, let me zoom in here because I'm hurting my eyes trying to look trying to look at these controls. I have a funny feeling they're going to wind up doing that soon, though. So the next one here is um, a Grain Sample Manipulator. So this is just called Grain, and this is their, um, I suppose, granular synth. They have, you know, this also what reason I find they actually have a lot of really good presets. Let me just come up here a bit. 
So you've got lots of control over the grain size and shape, and you've got these um, modulators. It's pretty much one of the most comprehensive grain synthesizers that I've seen. Um, you can obviously drag your own samples in here. So here's a here's a loop. And sometimes it can be fun to just cycle through their presets and then just drag your own stuff in there and have it be, have it sound weird. So that's grand. And again, if you want me to go more in detail on any of this stuff and maybe do a video about how to use it and stuff like that, I'm happy to do so. Um, but I'm just going to kind of pass through them uh, pretty quickly here. Grain is sick, though. Grain is one of my absolute favorite things in here. It's like it's really easy to kind of bring things in and warp them. So let's move on from Grain very quickly. They've got Thor, which is, I think, sort of their... Um, this is like their original... Sorry, show programmer. This is like their original, I think, power synth. This is what I always remember seeing people use when they were using Reason. And this does like pretty much everything. It does like FM, uh, wavetable, phase modulation synthesis. You can load in different components here. It's kind of modular, so you can have like a, you know, a form and filter in here. Or if you didn't want the form and filter, you could load in a state variable, or you can just bypass the filter, bring in a different oscillator here. And actually, I find the uh, this this synth is actually it's actually really good and really powerful. The problem with it is I just can't see anything. Everything is just too small. That's the the, the overarching complaint I have. Yeah. I just never use Thor because it, I'm like. <laughs> you know, <laughs> so um, that's the problem. The other thing I would like them to do with some of this stuff is some of these um, i'm just going to skip down here but just while i think about it because i'm probably for going to forget to mention it in a minute but if i bring in the new algorithm synth there so we've got these modulators over here um these uh lfos and then these curve ones that you can draw yourself and uh they're great or whatever you know they, they have all the stuff that you'd need the problem is is that if i want to route them i have to come in here and you know, I have to go to LFO and curve, and then I have to route LFO one, LFO one to the frequency of, you know, oscillator three or whatever. Okay, and that's fine; it's quick enough. But there's a couple of times, especially in the newer sensor, I'm like, why can't I just, why can't I just drag that to there? I just want to be able to do that. You know, it's I'm sure you know a lot harder to program than I'm making it out to be, but. That's one thing that I'd love to see is, uh, you know, you've got all the controls visible here and I've got the modulators visible. Why can't I just drag that over there instead of going down here into the mod matrix and looking for stuff? It just feels a bit, you know, feels a bit old school. I think we're kind of we're kind of done with, you know, clicking into mod matrixes now for the most part, unless you're editing something. You've got subtractor synthesizer. The older ones that are kind of come with reason, they sound good. They're perfectly capable, and I think they're very low CPU, but I'm not going to go into them too much because if, if you've been looking at Reason at all, chances are you've seen these, and they're not really the big draw either. Maelstrom, which seems to be, I think, some sort of wavetable synthesizer that mixes in elements of granular. Um, this one is actually cool, and I actually want to use this more because it is actually a very cool concept. The problem, again is I'm not a big fan of how small the GUI is. So I just don't find myself gravitating towards it like I do with some of the the newer ones that have admittedly still got that flaw, but it's much better. So, yeah, let's move on from... Yeah, Maelstrom basically lets you load up um, these different wavetables or uh, samples. I think it's kind of a mixture of both. And then you've got this index control. Or you can set their motion, which is like the speed at which it goes through these things. And you kind of mix those together. And then it has elements of kind of being just a regular subtractive synth as well. So you've got like a shaper here and you've got two filters as well. And you can use it to kind of manipulate sounds. Um, yeah, Maelstrom is definitely a cool one. So let's move on from Maelstrom monotone bass synth. It's like a sort of... I guess Moogie kind of synth that's designed for monophonic bass lines, but you can also make leads and stuff with it. Um, it's a basic monophonic synth that sounds good. 
filter sounds really good. But that's kind of a thing with Reason stuff is a lot of it actually sounds really good. The filters sound really good. The oscillators sound good. But um, a lot of this stuff, the filter's good, the envelope's really snappy. And you got a chorus and a delay built in here as well for when you want to put a delay on your bass. And uh, yeah, that's monotone. Um, then let's have a look at what else we got here. So some of these are like, you know, they're like little, little sampler things. They're cool, but uh, I'm not gonna lie, I haven't really used uh, this or really the layer stuff that much. Uh, now we're moving on to some of the kind of sample based stuff. So we've got this uh, rhythmic drum machine and this is just more drum library. Um, there's nothing like particularly interesting about this. You've got some control over the samples individually and you can edit them and whatnot. Um, there's nothing like madly interesting about them. You've got like a little effects section built in. Um, but you know, I mean, it's, it, there's some good samples in that. It sounds good. It's definitely worth having a look at. Uh, you got Radical Piano here. It's got a load of these. It's got a load of these, um, different kind of piano samples in it. Um, I, I don't have a keyboard, so I'm not going to try and play these on my actual keyboard here because it's not really going to show off um, how it sounds. It's just going to sound like this. Needless to say, um, my general review of these sample-based things in Reason is they, they actually sound really good. Like Radical Piano sounds really good. Then they've got these kind of physical model and I think sampler hybrids like Clang. The, the stuff in this sounds great. Like, I use this a lot. So I think it's like some combination of physical modeling and samples. Um, that's my understanding of it anyway. And um, it kind of, it's kind of like similar sounds you would get out of uh, like chromophone a lot of the time, stuff like that. But it sounds immense. Like, it sounds really, really good. And we're going to talk about one particular instrument in a minute that I absolutely love. So that's Clang. Then there's Pangea World Instruments. Which has like a bunch of weird... A bunch of weird different like samples in there as well. Anyway, I'm not going to play through stuff. Um, because I'm on the keyboard, so... Uh, let's, uh, then there's hu Humana Vocal Ensemble, which gives you a bunch of different, uh, samples for vocals. So yeah, it's just a, a bunch of different kind of, you got staccato, or you got as, or ooze. And then weird kind of presets with, you know, using those samples with kind of subtractive synthesis. Um, this is uh, very cool as well. Um, it, I think generally the, the thing with their stuff is they have these kind of instruments that do one thing. In this case, it's, it's voices. And it's kind of very specific, but it does that thing very well. Just like Clang, which I think I misspoke. Maybe there isn't actually a physical model and component to this. It might just be sample based. But they do a lot with the samples they've got in here. And they, they sound really good. And there's a lot of variety in the presets if you go through them. Of the sounds that they kind of get out of them. Um, then you've got NNXT Sampler, which is a quite powerful sampler that I'm not going to go into. Again, there is um, a pretty extensive sample library for this. And you can do some pretty advanced sampling in it yourself. Um, I mean, if you're in a DAW like Ableton or, or Bitwig like I am, or you know, even Logic now, I think, he, your sampler is probably superior in terms of workflow to this, but, um, so you might not want to do sampling yourself in it, but it, the, the sample library that it comes with is really strong, just like pretty much everything. Um, so yeah, that's the sampler. There is a full sampler in there. And if you're using the DAW, uh, the Reason DAW, which I don't use, um, you might 
actually quite like this sampler as your general kind of day-to-day -day sampler. You've got NN19, which is also a sampler. I think it's basically just a cut-down version of the other one, but don't quote me on that because I haven't really used it. So uh, Then you've got a MIDI out device, which allows you to send MIDI out, which is actually amazing, which we will see why in a second. Um, then we have... Where am I now? Okay, so then we have these, like... I guess these are like um, uh, instruments that would have been sort of racks that you would have bought, like uh, rack extensions, I think they're called, if you were a Reason user before. I'm going to briefly go through these, um, except for friction, which is like, friction is like almost reason enough alone to get this. But you've got algorithm, which is an FM synth. I have a full review of algorithm on my channel. Um, so if you would like to know more about it, you can go and watch that. I'll link it in the description. Uh, algorithm is a nine operator, up to nine operator FM synth. Um, you can also, instead of just loading sine waves in here, you can also load filters in here, or you can load uh, shapers, which have various modes, and you can load oscillator noise, which has noise and some wavetables in it. And then you, all of those can be routed to each other, to FM each other. In, so you can, like, say, uh, send an oscillator through a filter and then send that into another oscillator, into a shaper, and then send that into um, this oscillator to FM, this oscillator. So both of these are now FM in this oscillator. And then you could feed that back through itself and then bring that down here. So you can pretty much... That's probably going to sound bad. Doesn't sound great. Um... But yeah, it's it's a really powerful FM synth, similar to something like um, FM8 or something like that. Um, but yeah, you've got the, the wavetable things um, in here as well, so it's a little bit more flexible in terms of some of the wave shapes that you can work with. Um, only complaint about this, again, I think I mentioned this earlier, but the drag and drop thing, I wish you could just... This GUI is so inviting to use, I don't see why they don't just let you drag the modulation over, but maybe it's a technology thing they're possibly working on now. Um, other complaints about this is I wish there were uh, more filter modes, uh, maybe different slopes and uh, stuff like that, but, you know, you've got that elsewhere, so you don't really need it. But um, instruments-wise... I think we're coming close to the end of the sense. Complex modular, um, which the the patch that this starts with is immense. It's like Boards of Canada. I want to use that so much, but I'm, I'm pretty sure I can't because it's, you know, it's the literal... <laughs> it's the literal opening patch um this i'm not gonna lie i don't use um i don't generally this is a personal thing i don't like these kind of um these kind of modular synthesizers where you got a bunch of wires crossing over each other i like you we have the grid so if i want to do modular um, i'm in bitwig so i have the grid so if i wanted to do this kind of a workflow um, I just find the grid is so much more usable, but the the presets in here are immense and it seems like this sounds insane This would be a good time to mention as well You know there is a lot of um, There isn't an, an awful lot of capability for routing stuff in reason so you know for instance we can route audio into this you know and send it through the filters and stuff like that and that's true of a lot of the synths so like a couple of the ones that i'm about to talk about for instance this parsec one has like this really strange filter i'm just going to skip to parsec for a second so this parsec one so you can you can you can send audio through this right and it's got this one is it's an additive synth but it's got this all this mad stuff you can do like if we go to uh, I forget, is it, is it filter curve here, right? We can draw, we can draw, like, our own filter shapes in here. And you can send any audio you want through here, but you can also, you could set this to audio in, and then audio is going to come through here and go through the rest of the synth. But you can send it through this insane stuff, because this is a, an additive filter in it. Which I'm failing to show off because of what it, whatever this preset is doing. But yeah, it's got this crazy additive filter. You can even, I think, draw, like, unique pitch curves and stuff. Yeah, it's wild. So that's Parsec, by the way. Parsec is, uh, 
Parsec is a additive synth um, that has a... I, I would have to do a whole video on it to show it off, but it, it reminds me very much of um, Razor um, by Native Instruments. Um, but uh, yeah, it sounds, it sounds sick. And again, the thing I will say about Reason is they... they they focus a lot more on usable patches, I think, than a lot of places or a lot of companies you buy their synths and the synths have, you know, 10,000 patches, but they're all trying to show the synth off. Um, whereas a lot of these, you pull them in, you're just like, you play it and you're like, well, I could just use this, you know, in something. Um, which is one of the things I really like about Reason is that sound design and a lot of the time is quite simple and just usable and like, here's the thing. Here's something practical it could be used for, and we're going to give you some sounds of that. We're not going to have a sound that kind of, you know, it's like 14 different things going on in each ear, and then fucking something else is happening. It's just simple stuff that sounds good. Um, then we've got Friction. Um, friction. Man, Friction is immense. So this is like, this is, this is like reason enough to get reason. Um, this is a string synth um but it's also got kind of other stuff going on in here and it's like it's so there's physical model in here you can control the articulation of of um the thing you're putting through it you've got a vibrato section here you've got uh the things to control bowing over here you can make plucked instruments then you've got these different resonant bodies and the thing about this is, um, you're not going to notice because I'm playing on a keyboard, but the stuff that comes out of this actually sounds like good. Like it actually sounds like the instrument. It doesn't sound sort of really cheesy a lot of the time. Even some of the stuff, I don't know, can I see the, there was a, like a bass, like an upright bass preset in here somewhere. But, um... Yeah, I don't, I, I don't know. I'm not going to go and try and find it now, but it's um, it sounds great. Like, it sounds like an upright bass. It actually sounds good. It doesn't sound like, oh, there's kind of a cheesy synth upright bass that was done with physical model, and it sounds like, damn, that actually sounds good, and the articulation sounds good. Um, this is insane. If you want me to do a video about this, I will, because it's actually far too complicated to even really touch on in here, but this thing is great. Um, and there's lots of really good usable presets with this as well, so... Like, listen to that, that actually sounds really good, like... But yeah, they got loads of kind of sound designy stuff as well. That's terrible. <laughs> but yeah, they got loads of these, like, weird... Sort of... It just sounds great. Friction is friction is insane. Um, okay, so where are we at now? Layers. Um, not gonna lie, I haven't really used this. I think this might just be like some way of layering up samples on top of each other. That's my interpretation of what it is. It's not one I've used extensively. I'll be honest. But yeah, I think it's it's like uh, it's like it like lets you load in. samples and layer them on top of each other that's my interpretation that could be completely wrong but uh sorry if layers was like the main reason you were here to the, the main thing you wanted to see a review of i'm i'm quite sorry because i'm not going to be providing that so like a lot of the sounds in here are good i just i'll be honest i haven't really used it but it seems cool so take that take that as you will process pianos which is exactly what it sounds like it's a library of process pianos, and you can kind of switch between different ones in here. Um, again, presets for this are range between really usable stuff and then like really weird sound effecty kind of things. Um, I'll see if I can find anything like that really quickly. Uh, let's go to heavily processed here. See if we can find anything cool really quickly.
So yeah, just cool kind of weird stuff in here. And then also just really nice sort of usable piano sounds that are just a kind of a bit weird. Um, so yeah, I'm a big fan of that one as well. Um, there are some sounds in there that I really liked. We've got Radical Keys as well, which is like electric piano, sort of like lounge lizard kind of thing. Um, I haven't really played around with the controls on this much, if I'm honest, but I have been... I've sampled some of the presets and they um, they all sound really good. Um, this is getting a bit long, so I'm going to have to kind of fire through these a bit. Uh, Reason Drum Kits, man. I was amazed at this thing. It's like... It's like really simple, but the... The, the sounds are all really good. Like, there's quite a lot of kits in here. And they're quite like... It's quick to get to, and they're really usable, and you can sequence them with uh, some of the sequence and stuff, which is cool as well. Um, but yeah, there's a lot of kits in here, and they, they're they all like, it's pretty much all you'd want. I mean, if, if you're kind of loading up contact to have, you know, a real drum sound, um, this stuff sounds pretty good, you know? And it, most of the time, in elect if you're using it for electronic music, you're gonna be processing it heavily anyway, and it just sounds really good for that stuff. Then we have um, Radical Keys, Process Piano, Electric Bass. This is... This is just some models, I guess, or samples of, um, of some basses. You've got different basses you can select here. So there's like a hollow body here. You can get like a jazz or precision fender types. Um... You got a P bass there, and then you can switch the amp that you're using. And you can switch between the amp signal and the DI. Yeah, pretty versatile. There's a lot of presets for this as well, um, including some combinator stuff, which I'll check out now. So, again. Some really usable stuff, and then some kind of wackier stuff. But yeah, it's, um, again, really good sounds in that. Um, I haven't used it extensively again, as you can probably tell by the fact that I'm kind of winging what I'm saying about it. Uh, then there's Scenic Hybrid Instrument. This seems to be like a... Let's get rid of the bass combinator thing. This, uh, let's pull up. This seems to be like aimed at sort of, I guess, more cinematics kind of soundscape-y stuff. So you've got like two samples that are processed, or two engines, I guess. And then there's like a mixture between them. And then you have this, so you can balance between them over here. And then we've got the harp over here. And uh, then there's delay control here and a reverb. And then there's a color, which seems to be some sort of tone sort of. But yeah, this is all like kind of soundscapey, maybe even borderline cinematic sort of stuff. So there's like lots of drones and stuff in there. Again, I'm going to be honest, this is one that I haven't been, you know, I haven't looked at it a massive amount, so... Uh, it's it, the, the sounds that I just heard there were pretty good. So it seems to be some sort of a way of kind of uh, mixing together different stuff to create ambient. That's kind of the idea, sort of more ambient sounds, uh, or more sort of cinematic sounds. Then you've got these two oomph drums things. I'm not going to go too much into these. These are, you know, it's another drum machine. You've got one that's based around more of the, like, retro drum machine type of stuff. And then you've got one that's designed for, like, modern sort of club stuff. Um, there's actually some cool stuff in here. Uh, some, of the, you can, you, some of the processing that you can do is pretty cool. You can do, like, beat repeats and stuff like that. Um, there's some stuff you can mess around with with probability. Um, a lot of that stuff can be done sequencing-wise outside of this, but it is pretty cool. Um, the video's getting on a bit, so I'm not going to focus on these too much. Again, sounds are really good. So, yeah, that's the sound generation part of Reason, um, which I actually think, as you've seen there, because I've been covering it for the last half an hour, is 
I think fairly significant actually you know it's not a um it's it, it's it's not it's like it's not negligible how much you're getting with it in terms of sound generation the synths are like really diverse you could probably make pretty much any synth sound you want with this stuff the sample selection is really good um and uh yeah i mean pretty much all your bases are covered here i think now effects really briefly i'm not gonna go mad into the effects just because i haven't got the time my overview of the effects you've got some stuff here you've got a cool chorus that's got multiple modes um you've got a decent amount of control over it you've got different types of chorus here that have different controls uh some of them kind of goofy some of them are pretty cool uh let me just put on an instrument that i can put through some of this stuff i'll just use this So you can air fight bypass that. So yeah, the, the stuff all sounds good. You've got this modulation effect here. So it's got phaser, flanger, and a filter. And these all have like a bunch of pretty usable presets. And obviously all of this, these effects and stuff can be used in conjunction with... Um, with the sort of if we flip the rack here we can bring in lfos and stuff from the utilities over here and we can use those to control parameters here by bringing the cv into say the lfo or the frequency or whatever so you can do quite a lot with it then you've got this alligator filter thing which is designed to make uh, filter sequences uh, it's got like some it's got a high pass band pass and then uh, a low pass and you can kind of do different sequences i'll just run through a couple of presets so you can hear what it kind of does So yeah, kind of a rhythmatic filter sequencer kind of a thing. <clears throat> you can also do some other stuff with it. Like I think you can line the the filters up kind of to mix together and stuff like that. There's um, a, a phaser kind of thing that you can add in here. Um, I haven't used it extensively, but um, that's pretty cool. Pulverizer, which I have used extensively and now we use on basically everything. Um, this is like, uh, how to explain it? <laughs> so... So let's just so let's just turn this down. So that's the kick, and let's just squash it. So it's like just an absolute like saturation distortion filter thing that makes everything you put through it sound better. Um, it's like I think it's like it's sort of like reasons sort of like magic sauce kind of effect. You like you know you've got your OTT and you've got your sound goodizer pulverizer is like a version of that that you have some good control over um but it pretty much especially on drums it just makes everything sound absolutely squashed and mental echo which is uh obviously a delay uh, a delay that actually sounds really good this is probably now my go-to delay uh then we've got the scream for distortion this is really cool you've got a bunch of different drive modes here that you can put through and then the uh what this these two parameters do changes based on what you've selected so some of them have you know compression built into them some of them you select a kind of frequency that you're pushing to the distortion and uh yeah these all sound really good you've got like a sort of amp modeling i guess or um not amp modeling a cabinet sort of a section over here we've got these different kind of cabinet types and uh, you've got some control over where the resonance is in the body and how big they are. Um, again, not going to go too deep into it, but it's a generally very good sound of distortion. It's particularly good if you put through, uh, if you're trying to get like uh, 303 kind of baseline sounds, um, they sound pretty sick going through this. So that is a scream distortion. There is a digital vocoder, which is a vocoder. I think it has up to, yeah, 32 bands. Um, you have a pretty good amount of control over it, especially if you flip it. You've got uh, individual band level controls over here. So you can do some pretty wild stuff, like if you're familiar with the new Archeria uh, vocoder, the Moog one. It's similar to that, how you can like route uh, different stuff into different bands. So you can get pretty cool effects out of it. Again, a bit too complicated to go in here. 
um, you've got this uh, reverb, um, which is based on convolution. So you've got, let's just go into it here. You can see you've got a s absolutely immense amount of stuff to search through here. Um, yeah, this has got like a bunch of different um, convolutions that you can load into it. You can use it as same with any reverb. You can use it as like an amp or a cabinet simulator and stuff like that as well. And um, yeah, it sounds good. A lot of the presets are really good. Um, let's just breeze through these last few here. Neptune Pitch Adjuster. This is your Auto Tune. Uh, sounds good. N not as good as Auto Tune, but not far off. You've got an amp here. You got Retro Transform, another one of my favorites. This is like it's it's a it's a lo-fi plugin. Let's get rid of the let's get rid of that echo. So it's a lo-fi plugin. Let's get rid of this also. But it's much more than that. It's like almost like a sort of a convolution thing where it's got these different settings you can go through that sort of drastically change the sound. Some of them are lo-fi and some of them are weird. Like this psycho one is like a stereoizing sort of a thing. Washing machine. To me, it seems like it's a bunch of weird presets for convolution, and then some of them have like noise and a bit of distortion added into them. I could be wrong about that interpretation of what it's doing, but that's what it sounds like to me. Uh, next here, we've got channel dynamics, channel EQ, bus compressor. These are your basic, here's a compressor, here's an EQ, and here's a master bus compressor. All of them sound pretty good. Um, I'm not going to go too into detail because that's fairly standard. Soft tube bass amp is a bass amp. You got this synchronous effect modulator, which is like, it's actually really cool. This is like a uh, sort of like your massive or your serum, uh, more like massive, where you can draw in these either sequences or like LFO shapes or really even MSCGs. And then you can either use them to modulate the effects that you've got in here. So if we look, you can see you've got a distortion, a filter, and a delay, and you can run through these different modulators, and you can use them to affect the parameters of these effects, if you get what I mean. So you can send pink to um, the amount or to the character, and then you draw in your sequence, and then you can have another one for yellow, and that can be sent to here, and maybe also a bit to here, and then here as well, and then you've got three here. So yeah cool you set up loop points and stuff like that in it you can change the speeds of them you can change the phase also you can if you flip the rack you can uh send these out to other parameters like in your sense and stuff like that so it's kind of like you're uh, adding an mscg and stuff like that to your existing effects i'm not going to go through all of these uh other ones you get they sound pretty good it's phasers reverbs delays basic effects that you might use. Uh, you've got a pitch shifter, a dual pitch shifter, which I'll show you, which actually sounds quite good. I'm not going to go through it in detail, but it does sound very good. And you've got a lot of um, options about how you go through stuff. You got a rotary speaker. Again, rotary speaker sounds good. Now, very quickly, I'm just going to go through these uh, these utilities that you get so you get like a combinator the combinator here allows you to basically combine effects synthesizers samplers into one patch uh, sort of like a chain in bitwig or ableton and uh, allows you to have some macro control over those things uh, you got some buttons you can do things like bypass the effects in it and stuff like that very 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 cool um, and very useful for sound design. Uh, you also have this dual LFO, which is an LFO that you can patch to all of your devices and instruments. Then you've got like stuff like arpeggiators. You got a sequencer, which I actually believe is how you used to do all of your sequencing in reason was with this thing. But uh, yeah, then you've got like a, let me just take these out. So we that we have some room here. Merger and a splitter uh, where you can split and merge signals into multiple different paths and a mixer which you can mix things together then we move on to the players okay so the players are insane okay these are brilliant and you can now send them out via midi which is just glorious so you got an arpeggiator here dual arpeggiator it's polyphonic as well so you can be sending out 
different sequences on each channel that can either be polyphonic or monophonic. Probably not the best sound to show it off. Uh, let's uh, find something good here. So yeah, there's cool stuff in here. You can draw in your own arpeggiation. Let me just actually select one where it's active. So you can, you know, edit these really easily. Um, you can use it as a sort of a sequencer. Um, they can be tuned differently. They can be at different rates. It's great. It's my favorite arpeggiator I think I've ever used, which I'm going to be saying a lot about a lot of stuff in this, okay? Beat map. This is madness, okay? Let me show you this thing. All right, this is madness. So this thing, right, is... I need to do an entire video about this, but let me just run it here, and I'll show you what it does. So this is like this big, I guess, map that you go through, and each part of it, you can see it's got like, looks almost like mountains and, and valleys and stuff. And where you select on this, it's kind of weighted towards, ah, there's going to be more hi-hat in this, more kick in this, and it's just a different beat as you run through it, so. And there's a map select here, so let's have a look at some of the different ones. It's mad. You just, it's just got like hundreds of thousands of different little beats in there that you can just kind of go through and see what happens. And you got these different maps. And some of the stuff is really basic. And some of it is much more complicated. So yeah, I mean, that thing is just cool, man. There's no, there's no other way to talk about it. You could have a bunch of hi-hats in here and you could run through this and create this weird hi-hat loop with different stuff going on or weird percussion stuff. It's just insanity. That That's one of the coolest things about it. Um, and the sequencers, sequencers in general are node echo is a node echo. I'm not going to go too much into it. It's, an, it's a really cool node echo with a lot of control over like the notes, how they change over time, velocity over time, stuff like that. Um, it's really cool, uh, but I'm not going to go into it too much. Uh, you've got this key um, scaler, which lets you like create chords or stay in in scales. You can add inversions to things, stuff like that. It's just oh, that's not good. I shouldn't be dropping that. <laughs> so yeah, you've got this scales and chords here. This allows you to basically scale your keyboard, so you're pl always playing in the right key. Um, you can also have it. Oh, I think I broke my fucking mouse just fix that so yeah this is scales and chords scales and chords allows you to um set your keyboard to only play in one key or uh save little uh chords on each key and stuff like that so each key would be a different chord you can have inversions of things madness madness good stuff um and then obviously you can put the sequencer through these and you can send all that midi out Drum sequencer here, pretty comprehensive drum sequencer. I'm not going to go too into it, but you've got control over velocity, repeats, probability, stuff like that. It's a very full feature drum sequencer. You've got a bunch of different patterns that you can edit and then kind of modulate through. Um, it's, uh, let me just see if I can find something cool here. I don't know if I can quickly. Oh, then you've got this pattern mutator, which whatever pattern you put through it, it's going to allow you to change it. So. I'll just go through a couple of presets here. So then you've got a polyphonic step sequencer here. It's a step sequencer and it allows you to do things poly polyphonically. Um, this is also really good like you can you can sequence something pretty much whatever you'd want in here and then you can send that out to multiple destinations um and you can also send it out you know via um the midi out into your door or whatever um i'm not going to go into it too much in detail it's a step sequencer and it's polyphonic 
So finally here we got the quad note generator. Uh, again, I'm not going to go too in depth on this. Um, most honestly, because I, I just haven't used it that much and I'm not familiar with exactly what it does. But you hold down one key and basically it will, um, based on the sentence that you put in, it will allow you to generate four, kind of a four note polyphonic thing based off what note you hold down. So if I hold down one note here, maybe let's use an instrument. So let's pull that in there and get rid of Kong. Uh, let's pull back in that quad note sequencer or generator. So you can see you can do some cool stuff with this. And that's all from one key. Um, I'm going to be completely honest. Um, I have I, I pulled this up to have a quick look at it. Um, but I haven't really got into exactly how you program it and stuff. Uh, it seems like it's capable of a lot of cool stuff, but I don't really know that much about it. So, um, in conclusion, okay. So, um, Reason Plus is uh, pretty cool. I have had it for a month, and they have since added that FM synthesizer I showed off algorithm. I don't know how often, it's hard to know at this point, how often they're going to be adding in, like, new synths and stuff, but, um, you know it's with the stuff that's in it i think it is pretty much more or less worth the price um i find myself pulling it up a lot more than i pull up complete for sample stuff just because it's so immediate i use the effects a lot and the synthesizers are sick i'm i've done this video as a kind of a i guess for anybody who might be interested to have a quick look at everything that's included and make a decision about whether it's interesting to them or whatever. Um, so hopefully me giving a brief run through of everything that's kind of included uh, was helpful. Um, the other thing I want to mention is there is a pretty significant sample library included. So you've got massive drum supply here, like loads of stuff, loads of loops, um, like loads, like a lot. Um, and uh, yeah, just a just a, a bunch of different like presets and combinators and stuff like that. That sounds great. So that is Reason Plus. Um, the DAW, I'm not going to get too much into. My uh, general theory on the DAW is that it's actually quite powerful, but I think it suffers a bit with its workflow. Um, when you're trying to do things, they feel sort of unnecessarily complicated. Um, which is down to the workflow, the kind of modular workflow that they've got. I think that needs tweaks in places before I would really ever look at it. It does have some good features, like for instance, there is a, like a built-in sort of Melodyne thing that sounds quite good. Um, the sequencer itself is actually quite usable, but uh, for day-to-day -day stuff, uh, doing a lot of basic like kind of routing and, and the kind of way that it all runs together, it just seems like there's an extra step or two um, in reason for everything that you want to do. So they definitely need to work on the workflow, but I guess it is one of the older dolls and it was always kind of more focused on sound design, which it is amazing for, as you have seen. So I'm mostly using the rack, um, but the rack is, is immense. As you can, as you've probably just seen, the rack is absolutely immense. So highly recommend it, whether or not you, I've seen a lot of ne kind of negativity um, directed at this because of the subscription model. I think people are kind of resistant to that, but I think we're probably just going to have to get used to that because I think a lot of the people who are coming into music production now expect a splice kind of situation where they can have access to something for a monthly fee and they don't pay four, five, six, seven hundred dollars or whatever um, as a buy-in fee for the software. So I think we're going to be seeing a lot more of it. I think it's it's the way that all of this stuff is going to go. So, um, and I think that Reason is a pretty good offering for what you're paying for. So that's been me. Hopefully it's been helpful. Thank you.